And welcome. Good morning and welcome to the Vision Alignment Show where we all need to understand how important it is to know our vision and to know that our vision is connected with and is in align with our core beliefs, our core strengths, our core values. Some might just say core. <laughs> but thank you for joining us on the show today. We have got a great show for you lined up at, um, well, at 10 o'clock, which is now, but also another one that shall lined up at 1130 Eastern with, uh, well, I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. So we got good stuff coming and I want to make sure you stay with us for all that. So, um, you know, there are times where we need to take those blinders off. We have blinders on because we all have blindness in our lives. But there's also times where we need to put those binders on. We need to put those binders on and stay aligned with our vision. So somebody that's going to help us to understand how our core beliefs and our core values need to be aligned with our vision is a good friend of ours. And this is my friend, my new friend, uh, Lisa Kenicky. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Welcome from to wherever you are. This is a nasally accent from Wisconsin. No need to adjust your volume. <laughs> uh, I love it. <sighs> from Wisconsin. So tell me, Lisa, when is your first recollection of knowing your vision? I was on a canoe trip. I was a camp counselor, YMCA camp, and the river was called the Brule River. If you're familiar with Wisconsin and the UP, had some rapids on it, on the canoe going forward and coming around a bend, saw an eagle up in a tree. And I was like, first time I'd ever seen an eagle. And I was like, that is the coolest thing I have ever seen. And to me, that was my vision that I was going to work with youth. I was going to help kids, whatever it was, because I had a wonderful um, grandmother growing up who taught me the lesson of being third, that family comes first, friends are second, and I'm third. And so the combination of that eagle helping kids helping families, people, wherever it is right now. Um, that's what it was. And then I was a camp director for 20 years and then a school counselor. So the Eagle is what gave me my vision. Wow. Yeah. If you want to hear more, stay right there. Lisa, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning. This is phenomenal. Really appreciate you being on. But before we get into more of this, I wanted to, to uh, encourage everyone to share this video out with their community. And that would be helpful to make, make this community that we have larger. It would be great. Also, put a picture of you in your timeline of you winking. And when you wink, I want you to think, you know, if this guy knows it makes him unique, not me, me, you know, what? What is it that makes you unique? Because what makes me unique is not my eye. What makes me unique is my positive personality. And I'm able to share my story with other people in order to have a big impact on their lives. So that is what's important about understanding what makes you unique is to know how to use it. And then always, as always, uh, go to brianwagner.live and, um, you know, you can sign up for Radical Vision Insights and uh, just, you know, be a part of this community. So thank you very much. And I see a good friend of ours is on, Mr. Eric Bam. Uh, Eric Bam, where is he? There he is, Eric Bam. Hey, good morning, Eric. <laughs> Pizza is important, Eric. It absolutely is. I mean, if that's your family, I don't judge. <laughs> right? Exactly. And here he, is, here he is winking. So thanks for being on this morning, Eric. 
So, um, Lisa, you've got more of a story than that to tell. So, I would like for you to tell your story, and I'll go away for a little bit. Well, I hope you'll come back. So, yes. Yeah, so, here's my story. So, I was, I'm a born and bred cheese head. I grew up on a farm. And the thing about me that was different is I, I have props. I like playing with tractors. So, that is my Alice Chalmers tractor that I played with. I played with GI Joes. I didn't play with dolls like my neighbor was playing with. And so I just grew up being the farm, doing the things that I did. Went into high school, I was our school mascot. I was our homecoming queen. And what was interesting about that is that growing up in Reedsburg, you were either raised Lutheran or you were raised Catholic. I was raised Lutheran and I was forbidden to date a Catholic boy, but they never said anything about a Catholic girl. So I moved on with my life and I talked about being a camp director for 20 years for the YMCA and for Girl Scouts. And I loved, loved, loved doing that. Then I went on to get my master's to become a school counselor, did that for 12 years in the middle in the high school. And now I'm a professor training the next generation of school counselors. And I actually met Brian through NSA, through National um, Speakers Association, because I too serve on the board of directors here in Wisconsin. Um, and delighted to say that this is now the 30th state that I've spoken in. So thank you, Ohio. Um, spreading my mes message. I wrote a little book called Be an Inclusion Ally, the ABCs of LGBTQ+. And that's, I would say that's chapter 52 of where I'm at right now, because I know that there are other things coming ahead for me. Wow. Okay. So you... Um... You glanced over the LGBTQ part of that story. So t tell us more about that. I sure can. I wasn't sure how deep to go with that. So this is this is actually, it's a funny story. Picture this. So I was living in the right. Washington, D.C. area after college. And I had come home. And I'm about 25 years old. And sitting around the table at Thanksgiving, talking about how, you know, I, I just, I can't find a boyfriend. There's nobody I want to date. My sister who is older than me leans forward. Well, at least it's because you're gay. Please pass the carrots. That was, that was my first. Yeah. Right. So I really? passed her the carrots and I just started bawling because well, it made a lot of sense. But again, Brian, there wasn't an option. I didn't have any role models growing up. I was like, how can this be? Even though I hung out with all of the female athletes all throughout high school and college. I mean, summer camp, it was fabulous because you could just be who you wanted to be and eat s'mores. No big deal. So after she told me that, it kind of made sense. And then I went through, you know, trials and tribulations going forward. But I am so happy to say that in, in addition to, you know, the vision of having the eagle and serving youth, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that no kid grew, growing up felt alone. Mm -hmm. And even if it was, you know, and at that point, when I came out, it was many years ago. Um, and, and there are still kids and adults who are coming out. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help allies just like you, Brian, and every, and, and I think Bump was on the, our pizza lover friend, Eric, Eric whatever his yeah. name. I don't think it was Bump. Sorry, Eric. Um, <laughs> Eric Bam. But, yeah. Ba okay. To be able to say, you know what, just be nice to people. You know, I mean, and what you're talking about too, with your, with your, um, your vision and your story is, you know, yes, you you have a positive attitude. And if that's what people take away from me, you know, it, it that's wonderful. I am Lisa Kay, your everyday gay. I pick up dog poop just like everybody else does. <laughs> so I am open to people asking me questions. You bet. I'm glad oh. you laughed at that. That's kind of our marketing. <laughs> oh, that's good marketing. I love it. Very nice. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, if there are questions out there please put them in the chat box and uh, we'll definitely answer them so 
there must have been a time when your sister said that at the dinner table. Yeah. Did, did you deny it? Or were you in, in denial? No. Um, well, I, I was, I think I was in shock because again, I mean, this was, you know, late nineties and no one, I hadn't even met anyone. Okay. So here's how I'll just say this. This is how vanilla I, my town was growing up. I did not meet my the first person of the Jewish faith until I moved to Washington DC after college. Yeah. And so diversity was not even in our language. We were raised Lutheran, German, we didn't talk about anything. Right. So all of a sudden I went from black sheep to rainbow sheep and uh, and had to find my own friends and my own support group because I was, I was kicked out of the family for that. Uh, my sister loved me. And so I just, I stuck with that. And what I was able to do was to, to search out strong female supporters, advocates. And so from my high school Fayed teacher, I, I had a female mentor in every chapter going through who they were all straight, by the way, um, who just loved me unconditionally and, you know, and kind of said, Leash, you have something in you, you know, and and that's when you said you have positive energy, Brian, I was like, oh, my gosh, so do I. That's what I love. And I just think that I'm super funny. So if that's all that you remember I about me, that's fine. Oh, and by the way, she was gay. So that's fine, too. <laughs> so I can relate almost 100 percent with you. Uh, I grew up Catholic. My wife grew up Lutheran uh, in, in Northwest Ohio. Yes, right, right. And so I grew up near a town. I grew up on a farm. It's much, sounds like much like you. Yeah. Um, near a town of 950. Um, you know, that was the big town for us. Ooh. There was no diversity. There was no, it, it, yes, I, I remember going to, um, going to town, town, uh -huh. know, Toledo for us, where you know we had to, we had to roll up our windows, you know, because there was bad bad areas of town we were going through. <laughs> I'm glad you survived. Yes, so I can relate to everything about this except for the gay part. Well, and that's okay. So, I still like you. Hey, well, thank you. I appreciate that, and I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> Tell me, uh, or tell us, not just me, tell us, with, without your mom and dad being on your side, Yeah. how was that? How, how did that make you feel? I, when, when, okay, lonely would be the first word that I would say, but I think that it was different. I think that I, rather than having my birth family, I had my own chosen family. Oh. And I think a lot of that came from being um, a camp counselor and then a camp director, because that was just unconditional love everywhere. I mean, we literally were the tree huggers. And it didn't matter if you were short, tall, fat, skinny, color, religion, ability, whatever it was, everyone was accepted at camp. Hmm. Same thing for the campers. And, you know, we had whatever it was, sh again, shape, sizes and everything. And so in addition to choosing who I wanted in my life, um, and my grandma was such a huge, huge influence of that. She died my freshman year of high school. Aww. And and I think that, it, well, she would have been, she would have been my biggest cheerleader. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to dedicate my life going forward to her because she was such an example of just empathy and never said an ill word about anyone. Um, and she thought things, but she would never say them. Mm -hmm. And and so I was like, you know, I need to make my grandma Della proud. And, grandma um, Della. and, and I think that it was, it, it's interesting because even though I chose strong female advocates and role models to me it wasn't it wasn't a sexual orientation thing it was you know what i need to know how to be a strong female so i need to learn from strong females in lots of different walks of life and so it, it taught me resilience that was the biggest thing that it taught me it was like okay I can go down this path and, you know, complain, do all sorts of 
other things, but I wanted to prove everyone wrong. I was the captain of every team, president of every club, volunteered, mainly because I didn't want to be at home because my parents were also alcoholics. Uh And so whatever I could do to be away from them, that's, that's what I did. Hmm. Wow. And and so uh, where are your parents in in your life now? So, um, mother has passed, um, 2014 wow. and that's okay. It was, right. uh, you know, she, she, uh, had been living with a brain tumor for a very, very long time. Mm. Um, and my, my paternal figure is still living and he lives in the hometown and I just don't go back there. And, um, and, and I think that that's part of the story too, to be able to mm. say, to the the young people I work with, friends that I meet, that that again, I just I I don't want well my story. I mean, however people are going to react, they're going to. But I want to be better instead of bitter. And so, well, there's a lot of therapy that has come along with that, Brian. I'm not going to tell you that it's been. <laughs> way, you just way wait one. <laughs> But lots of therapy has helped me through that. Um, and yeah, big proponent of meditation and just getting to know myself. And and I think the other thing with that is the more that I help other people, the more that it is, it fills my bucket to be able to say, you know what, Lise, yeah, you do have a message. Let's just go out and tell people to be nice to each other. That's the yeah. big thing. So uh, in a friend of ours, Mark is from Ohio, but he also vacations in Wisconsin or spends time in Wisconsin. I don't know if he has a boat boat out there or what, but uh, something cool. Uh, Anyway. Hey, Mark. Yeah, right. So tell us about how you help people. One of the, I think by being funny. I think that that is the first way that that I help people. And and when I say that it is so I'm also a certified diversity practitioner and I have a certificate from Cornell University. So I have a master's in counseling. I've done a TED Talk like you. I've been an author, right? And so I can speak on on many issues. When I go and I talk about some people are ready for gay and some people aren't right away. So whether I start with some diversity um what I want to do is I want to remind people that we're more similar than we are different. And when my message comes through, I talk about, I I told you the story of me being um, our school mascot when I was in high school, we were the beavers. I was also our homecoming queen. So I'm queen beaver. And that's our salute. <laughs> that, my friend, is how I start every presentation. So the fact that you laughed really? is wonderful. Right. <laughs> and so so I'm like, you know, if you have any questions about either being a homecoming queen or being a beaver, <laughs> that that's what I'm here for. I go to you. Well, right. I mean, hashtag, right. you know, call. You're the one-eyed Brian. I could be beaver queen. You know, I could kind of <laughs> go with that. Yeah. And so. Yeah. And so I think I think that the message then is it's never shame. It's never coming across saying, you know, well, I know more than you do because of my fancy degree or whatever. It's the hey, we're on a journey. We are learning this. Right. It is a marathon, not a sprint. So I'm just here to to help you again to have a safer environment, a more inclusive culture? Um, can you have belonging? And and that starts with you. That starts with you, the person eradicating unconscious bias because you have it in your family, you have it in your community, you have it in your workplace, wherever it stems from. And so again, if you like pizza and that is the most important thing to you, I can turn pizza into a diversity talk fantastically. <laughs> Uh, well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and and you so you've written a book. We we talked. We sh- you showed that. So, uh, and what's your book called again? It's called "Be an Inclusion Ally." Ah, the yes. Views of LGBTQ plus. So, can I tell you the story about how the book came about? Yes, please. And, Thanks, and I'm going to put up. I'm going to put up your your uh, your uh, your company your your company your website. URL. So. Yeah, excellent. Lisa Kennedy, Lisa Kennedy.com. It's like Kennedy with a kick. So Got it. my story, second year as a middle school counselor, I'm sitting in my office 
I hear a knock on the door. Hmm. Student walks in, says to me, Miss Kennecke, it's easier pretending to be a boy in this town than it is to be gay. This is, I'm sorry, back, back up. So this is when and when and where? 12 years ago, in my middle school, suburban Madison, Wisconsin. Hmm. And you are what, to, what do you teach at that time? I am the middle school counselor. Ah, okay, okay. So my second year middle school counselor, sitting in my office, student walks in, also a student of color, which we didn't have a lot of diversity at our school. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Student says to me, Miss Kennecke, it's easier pretending to be a boy than it is to be gay in this town. Now, at this point, I was a 40-year-old cisgender, which means I was born female. I still identify as female, gay adult with white privilege. And I wasn't out to the students yet because I was afraid I was going to get fired. Oh. 40 years old. So this was 12 years ago. There, you can do the math. That's how old I am. <laughs> And I looked over at my desk and I was like, I need to help this kid, man. If this kid has that much courage and they're a little pinky to tell me this and I'm not out yet. Yeah. I saw this pen. So the pen says Trevor on it. Yeah. And the Trevor Project is the nation's and the same pen, nation's leading suicide prevention hotline for LGBT youth, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning youth. And I knew. If I didn't do something, I sure didn't want that kid to kill themselves. So I went mm -hmm. home, talked to my wife. She said, yep, we'll figure it out if you get fired. That was literally our conversation. Hmm. So I came back to school the next day and came out to the student. And <laughs> the student says to me, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so not only. <laughs> right, you were, you were so worried about it. Duh, right. Did my sister tell me I was gay, which I didn't know. All of the students at my school were like, it's about time, Miss Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so there you go. So, so basically, the good news about that story is that that family and another family, we actually changed policies at our school to be more inclusive, not just to the LGBT students, but to all students, which was wonderful. And that mm -hmm. now is helping me to be a consultant at school districts across the state of Wisconsin. So hopefully the yeah. nation. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And so, you know, like that's what I did my TED talk on then, too. It was like, I need to save some lives. I need to stop. I need to get out of my own closet and 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 spread the spread the the vision, the message, everything. But through humor again, mm -hmm. you know what? Let's just do this. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. I love the, it. The student did it for me. So that was what was fun. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Sha. <laughs> uh, so what was the conversation you had to have with uh I'm sure you had to have this conversation with the principal, right? Um actually, yeah. And so I was out to the staff, but not to the students. Oh. Okay. And, in, and in fact, when I was looking for jobs, I was offered a job as a high school counselor the same day, two different school districts. And so what I did is I made sure that sexual orientation was enumerated, was listed out in their vision and mission statement. Mm -hmm. One district had it, one district didn't. And so that's the district that I went to. Yeah, administrator is the very first person, even before I took the job. I was like, well, once I was officially hired, then I would say, oh, by the way, you need to know this. Yeah. And will you be supportive? And thankfully, yes, for 12 years, it was one, 12 years, it has been wonderful. I have lots of awards. I've served on national board of directors as a school counselor, just spreading the word, keynoted lots of conferences um, about inclusion, you know, and again, not just the gay stuff, but it's like school counselors are the first line so many times that kids are going to come to. So we need to help them. Hmm. Wow. That's, yeah, that's really cool. We haven't even gone to any of the questions that I had prepared. That's okay. I do have all the answers. Look at that. Friends playing at home. Yes. Wow. I'm a good student. Yeah. So tell me, 
what does then oh and, and my friend mark here he is uh, on and says that he's three minutes west of madison Lake Lake Ho 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 oh that is yeah. fantastic yeah yeah uh, mark call me i like boats <laughs> mark's a good guy um Tell me, tell us a, a little bit about what the next uh, next thing is for you. I mean, you, you obviously you've been a speaker now for a year plus. Um, what's next? Goal is all 50 states. Yeah. International, which I finally got. So I'll be speaking in Canada this June. Um, book number version two, volume two has now mm -hmm. come out available at Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Ooh. And. Um, to meet Robin Roberts, I mean, that would be kind of cool. I mean, uh, that would be, you know, top of the list with the book. Um, why why Robin Roberts? I love her story. I love that she has transformed herself from using her talent as an athlete to now she has everyone's ear. And so you know, on Good Morning America, that people will will flock to her. And and then she survived cancer and she has done this. And, you know, she's in a same sex relationship as well. So yeah. I'm like, that is fantastic to have that as a role model um, would, would be wonderful. And if they ever make a movie about me, Queen Latifah will play me. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> So, I mean, when you talk about what's coming down the pike, I'm like, you know, Queen Latifah, if you're listening right now, I'd love for you to play Lisa Kennecke. Um <laughs> You'll have to learn the accent, though, Queen. So, yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> yeah, there is that. You know, and then, Brian, I actually I, I want to give you kudos because I do want to have a, a show like you as well to be able to to bring people in and and from the diversity lens to be able to say you know what I want people to see people of all abilities neurodiversity um, religions whatever it's going to be because if I'm the only gay person you know you'll know that all gays are funny so that is absolutely okay with me Lisa K you're everyday gay <laughs> uh well you're welcome. Uh, I'm I'm appreciative of having you on the show. This has been phenomenal to to get a chance to to know you better. I, I apologize if I asked you a lot of questions. I I really never told you I was going to ask you. Uh, I loved them. Morning routine is pizza. I mean that is that's all I do. And then I go in my house. Morning. What's that? You eat pizza in the morning? No, I just wanted to give your friend that little shout out. Oh, got it. Yeah. Mr. Bam. Yeah, it's coffee <laughs> and meditation. That's how that's how I like ground myself and such. So yeah. So you would be less calm or or more calm? Can you imagine? Well, here's what's funny about that is that um, so yes, I I have to be because my wife says I exhaust her, but that's okay. Uh, so as a middle school counselor, I am like this twenty four seven. In fact, the students would say, Miss Kennecke, have you ever heard of decaf? <laughs> but yeah, no, I am like this all the time. And it has been so wonderful being on your show. It was that was actually uh, a bucket list. Well, but I was like, how soon do I ask him? Dear yeah, Brian, I mean, when you, can I be you on your need, show? You need to have a better bucket list. Well, it's a low bucket. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Oh, it must be a really big bucket if you, if you come up with this. Oh, I have lots of bucket lists. Oh, good. Well, that's You're my good. Ohio bucket list. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what's next on your bucket list before we go? Next on my bucket list is going to NSA this summer in Vegas, meeting you and everybody else in person to be able to say thank you. I am vaccinated, so I'm all about hugs. Oh, I'm a hugger, so just know that. Yeah. And spreading the love of cheese curds to everyone, anywhere. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. I appreciate you. This has been great. Yes. I'm gonna, thank I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna wave you off, but then I'm we're we're gonna close out the show. And then I'll, I'm going to come back to the green room and talk to you a little bit if you don't mind. Sounds great. Thanks, All right. everyone. All right. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my goodness. 
What a great show. <laughs> Lisa Kennecke is phenomenal. So I'm just uh, so appreciative of having her on and uh, getting to know more about her, getting to know more about the LGBT, LGBTQ community. Um, that, that for me is something outside of my, um, probably outside of my comfort zone because I don't really talk about that, um, but definitely outside of my norm. So um, great to have her on. So um, thank you so much for being on, Lisa. Um, we've got more great shows lined up for you for today. We've got Lisa Hain coming on from also Wisconsin, and she'll be on at 1130, and she's going to be talking about Alzheimer's. Having a, uh, a husband with Alzheimer's and advanced Alzheimer's, uh, that'll be a great show, and I'm looking forward to that on Radical Vision uh, for, for Disabilities. So. All kinds of good stuff coming up, uh, and we've got a great, uh, great lineup for next week. Um, we'll go into that as well on our eleven thirty show. But thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate you. I appreciate all of you, and thank you. If there's anything, anything that I can do for any of you, by all means, let me know.